So uh, welcome to this uh, Ethico Academy uh, workshop webinar series, um, where Ethico is, uh, for those of you who don't know what Ethico is, Ethico is IT, Ethico ITS Europe is a stakeholder association of uh, 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 in ITS, and this is part of of the series, this this webinar uh, that we are holding now. Um, Ertico Academy is uh, holding this webinar series in, uh, with the aim of sharing knowledge with the ITS community uh, by inviting speakers from within the membership of Ertico, but also uh, inviting uh, experts and partners that would like to share the expertise that they have in specific topics and discuss and debate on, uh, on developments, on new developments and visions. Uh, the topic today is traffic management, loop and governance. And this is a topic uh, of high importance in, in ITS, especially considering safety, efficiency, uh, inclusiveness in mobility, but also with what is coming with automation, with what we call CCAM, Connected Cooperative Automated Mobility. So uh, let me introduce to you uh, my excellent panelists. Uh, for today. So it's uh, Dr. Laura Coconea from, uh, she's the head of innovation um, in ITS division from Sparco. Uh, also Pedro Baradas, uh, he's chief strategy officer in Armis ITS. And Dr. Wolfgang Ponweiser, senior research engineer from the Austrian Institute of Technology. Um, last but not at all least, uh, Dr. Biagio Ciuffo, Scientific Officer from the European uh, Commission Joint Research Center. Let me um, uh, introduce the topic that we will be discussing today and Julia is helping me from the office. Thank you Julia for going already to the first slide of, uh, of the presentation. To the next one, yeah, to this one. Um, no, the one before, thank you. Uh, before I give you the introduction uh, to the topic, uh, allow me to uh, also uh, tell you that in order to facilitate the discussion and allow the, the panelists to give us uh, their, their presentations and their vision, um, we would like to have the questions that you may have via chat and we will uh, discuss them. I will be reading them to the panelists and we will discuss them at the end of, uh, of all the presentations. So the webinar is going to last until uh, uh, 4.30. Um, and we are looking forward to a very, very interesting discussion. So let me already introduce to you the, the topic um, by, uh, of course, talking about the TM 2.0 concept. Um, those of you who know me know how much I, I really like talking about it and also working on it. And uh, it is a, 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 a topic or a concept that came out of the TM 2.0 innovation platform of Ertico. And it's working on information loops in traffic management. And it's also looking at governance. Why information loops and governance? Because it's not only one or the other. It has to be both. We have to work on both in parallel. Both the technology, so the data and the information and how it moves, and the how. And the how meaning the governance, the business models, the agreements on, on how this loop goes back from the source or all the sources. And I'll, 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 I'll give you the next slide now. Um, into, into a loop. This is actually a, a scheme that was developed by one of our panelists today, some years ago, Laura, um, and it shows this loop of data, from data collection into data processing and implementation um, with regards to the vehicle. So you see from the, the, the change in color denotes more or less the management. Eh? So the data collection until some point is, is more dealt by the public sector and then the processing the implementation almost um, almost always goes for uh, is 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 done by the private sector of course we have exceptions according to the the region the city and the the country and the and the laws um but this concept came out of the tm 2.0 platform as i said which was uh, uh, set up back in uh, in in 2014 and 
the aim of this entire discussion uh, that we have in the platform is how to enable the vehicle interaction with traffic management. Traffic management, not centers, but procedures. So what these 42 by now members of the TM 2.0 platform have agreed to follow are the principles that you see on your left. So, <laughs> I'm sorry, collaboration and trust, very important. Um, collaboration is the collaboration of all the stakeholders and the trust among them. And this goes into the principle of competition that we are going to be talking about later. The second is alignment of information to drivers and consistency. You cannot see one thing on the on on on, a, on, on your navigation and another thing announced by the by the road uh, operation or, or operators. Uh, so there should be alignment. There should be alignment of information and consistency in that. And then at the end, the third principle, which makes total sense is understanding of among stakeholders understanding the needs the priorities um, and and how to make sure that we can work together we can still compete but at the same cooperate this is what co competition is is all about if you go to the next slide julia you're going to see what we developed in the tm 2.0 platform um, after one of our task forces uh, reports uh, was completed. Uh, and we developed this principle of win-win-win. What is the added value in cooperating, in, in cooperating with your competitors or in anything? Nobody goes into cooperation or an agreement unless there's something in it for them. So what is important is to know that the, the TM2.0 concept or uh, uh, set of principles is providing this win-win-win for the city administrators and the traffic managers, for the drivers, for the traffic uh, information service providers as well. So, for example, for the city administrators, uh, avoid congestion and traffic collapse, of course, and optimize at the end the capacity of the road network. The driver, if this there is this consistency of information and this uh, cooperation and competition among stakeholders, they can uh, benefit from not only avoiding congestion, but more relaxed driving, um, receiving other relevant regional information, and have the best route, routed options aligned with the traffic management plans. And I'll, I'll come to that in a minute. So, and the service providers, of course, they um, get to provide information to their users that goes beyond congestion that helps in, in so many ways and at different levels. So um, if you go to the next slide, I have an example for you, which, which always helps to understand how this, how, how this concept works. So I'm taking an example. I, 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 it's one of my favorite ones. So you want to go to the cinema and you're in Zurich and you are in the, in the Fingstrasse, and I'm pronouncing it really badly. Uh, but you are there and it's a three minute drive to go to the, to the cinema or to the street that you can park and reach the cinema. Um, and that's the routing that is provided to you by the service provider. It's the fastest and that's it. Um, but what if the public authority of the city of Zurich or the road operator in Zurich has decided to geofence this area that you find yourself in and wants the service providers the Tom Toms and the Hears and the Inrixes of, of this world to detour their uh, users and uh, closes the area. And if you if you go to the next slide, Julia, you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. And it's it's making the it's making Tom Tom in this specific um, case to uh, reroute the user for 25 minutes. And of course, you you missed the beginning of the movie. That's there's no question about it. But this is a, a wish of the public authority, and then it, it all depends on how the service provider is going to receive it. If it receives, if he, if the service provider receives this as a as a request or as a mandatory um, uh, um, uh, that directive, let's say. Uh, it's it's two different things. So the levels of this cooperation between the public and the private sector in TM 2.0 varies, 
And then uh, what is also important is to for, for TomTom Tom to know that it's not the only service provider that has to respect this kind of wish from the public authority, because if it is the only service provider, then, then that, that reroutes you for 25 minutes delay, then the user is going to say, oh, I'm not going for that service provider, I'm going for the service provider that gives me the three minutes and I don't care. Now, what is also important is for the service providers to understand that uh, Zurich has something in mind to give that kind of uh, request or advice to the to the um, to the routing uh, services of of uh, TomTom or B-Mobile or somebody else. There is a, a, an entire thinking behind, which is of course valid, and it's always better to for the public authorities to. Um, explain to the service providers what are their plans, the traffic management plans, and the measures they're taking to implement them before the service providers are uh, faced with a situation, oh, I'm going to lose half of my users if I do that. So this concept of cooperation has a lot of preparation behind it and a lot of dialogue and understanding among the, the stakeholders. And, and that is why the, this platform, this TM 2.0 innovation platform of Vertico, when it started, it had only 16 members and very few public authorities. And now there are 42 and half of them, 22 of the members in TM 2.0 are public authorities because there's this need. They recognize the need of dialogue and cooperation to various degrees eh? from the planning of the management, so the traffic management plans, to the implementation and, and, and so on and so forth. So when this chain or, or, or group of stakeholders find what find what is the win-win-win and the business models for, for all, this is the ideal situation where we have this uh, alignment of objectives and needs and this is where we can ideally reach also the optimization of the of the traffic, um, of the road network or of the traffic. And, and let me take you to the next slide and I think it's my last one. And just, just throw it out there that we are not talking only about traffic management uh, on the road and, and service providers. We're talking about um, multimodal mobility. We are talking about also not only service providers and, and navigation devices, but we are talking about infrastructure. So there's a whole group of stakeholders that is being involved in uh, managing the mobility network. And now with enhanced automation that is coming more and more and this multimodality, including micromobility that is entering our lives uh, every day, we are going to face a situation where we have to learn how to cooperate and we have to find to learn how to find this win-win-win in order to go for a, a, a mobility network that is uh, not going to be collapsing uh, every every now and then. So that was my last slide. I I want to um, set the questions out there, and my panelists are going to answer them from from different perspectives, from the perspective of of the industry, from the perspective of research as well knowing also having been working with cities and public authorities and um, let me let me uh, uh, mention the questions so we are discussing about loop and governance and one of the main points is to find the business models and how possible this competition this cooperation with your competitors for the common benefit is and how clear this is and 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 the challenges that we are facing now in the transit from the traditional traffic management into this interactive traffic management, into this loop that should be happening. And at the end of the day, how much do we want to disrupt the road uh, transport network and how ready we are for automation that is coming? And the most important of all, where is the user in all this? Where, where, where are the needs of the user? And do we actually take them into account in our very passionate discussions about uh, traffic management? So let me invite already the first speaker of, of this panel, uh, Dr. Laura Coconea. She's going to give us uh, the perspective from Svarco. 
Hello, Laura. And the Hello, microphone is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. So, uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Joanna for this great <laughs> idea. And <coughs> indeed, our passion uh, for the topic and for traffic management generally, it's it's very high. Actually, we started discussing during the vacations about this. So, uh, it's still inspiring also in our relaxed moments. And uh, I also want to thank our listeners because, uh, yes, it's a Friday afternoon. So it's great to have you here with us in listening and in challenging us on the topic. So uh, as, as uh, Joanna said, I will provide uh, the Svarko perspective on this. As you might know, Svarko is uh, uh, active in the transport industry for more than uh, 50 years now. We were born in 1969 and we really deal with the wide coverage of market sectors uh, in relation to the traffic industry, starting from road markings until the uh, whole uh, categ all categories of, of ITS uh, market sectors like urban mobility, interurban uh, traffic management, parking and e-mobility and also public transport. So let's say for us, all these challenges, yes, indeed, we feel them uh, every day. Uh, just a couple of words about me. So um, uh, I'm working in Svarko since uh, 10 years uh, in innovation. And since, since this year, uh, I have the, the pleasure to, to tackle this challenge of leading innovation uh, activities uh, at, at group level in Svarko. And indeed, I'm working since the very, very beginning in TM2.0, since before the first launch in 2014. And uh, Joanna was mentioning, uh, yes, me drawing that picture at the very beginning on how we want to achieve uh, convergence among all actions uh, for both data acquisition and then actuation of traffic management measures. And it's really um, exciting to still see that, that image uh, in, in working documents and in presentations. Um, and one last thing that I want to say uh, about this, uh, for example, me and Joanna, yes, we are, and, and others also. Um, I remember also Pedro since the early days of TM2.0. It's one of the uh, few constant things in our lives because since then we changed companies, we changed roles. Maybe our lives changed, but we are still uh, into this uh, traffic management 2.0. Okay, uh, if you can go to the next slide, please. So I promised Joanna that I would keep it short. So don't worry when you see uh, the 1920 there. Uh, since I saw this picture uh, the last time, uh, many uh, the first time many years ago, uh, it always makes me smile because uh, I really think where we started with traffic management and uh, what is happening today that is a completely different world after after 100 years. So um, how everything evolved. And uh, for us as Varco, it's, it's very important this because, for example, before uh, 2002, our only ITS offer was related to traffic lights. So traffic lights are really our beginning and uh, we still love traffic lights, but we try to make, make them smarter and make them adapt to, to the world. Thank you. Next slide, please. So since 1920, uh, things have changed a lot. And of course, we all discuss uh, about these elements probably in our daily business, but just to, to review them a little uh, also um, in, in the view of our talk in the next minutes. So uh, we talk oftenly about urbanization because 60% uh, of us will be living in cities by 2030. 
And even though we somehow do ITS since uh, one, 100 years ago, uh, we see that there is an incrementation of congestion since 10 years ago. So for sure we are fighting a big fight uh, and yes, we are still fighting it. Then we have new things coming, like for example, autonomous driving. Uh, of course, we still don't know the exact time, but we we talk already about level four uh, after, yes, before 2030 on, on our streets. Then of course, connectivity and, I, and IoT, uh, and this connects uh, very much to the topic uh, of the of today's uh, webinar, because we are talking also about closing the loop between the traveler, between the road user and the traffic management center. So connectivity is really a key element here. On the other hand, uh, we are more people living in cities, but we want greener cities be because we want to improve our quality of life. So uh, I'm sure this buzzword sustainability, uh, uh, yeah, uh, it's also very often also in, in your ears uh, because cities now have really targets for decarbonization and they really have an increased willingness to invest in systems that could support that. Then, of course, the model shift. The more uh, we go towards um, the smart city, the more we would like people to to get down of the of their private cars and use other modes of transport. And um, of course, everybody was working so hard and so intense on 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 sharing concepts and so on. And now, uh, with with all the uh, COVID experience. Uh, we learned that not always sharing uh, is, is safe and we, we have additional conditions to tackle right there. Uh, then, of course, big data and, of course, the rising of e-mobility that supports our, our clean cities and the quality of, of air. And now, if you go to the next slide, we can see what exactly does this mean for us in the traffic industry. Um, all, all these elements are creating, as, as I was saying, additional challenges. In 1920, it was enough to, to have a traffic light to regulate an intersection. Of course, today, this is not uh, uh, enough anymore. But still, for us, we see challenges and we like to think that from every challenge, we can derive some opportunities there. For example, in case of urbanization, we see that there is more, more and more business for us in the urban sector. And that we can also invent some new traffic management offerings, uh, addressing all transportation modes. And we learned that we need to stop thinking vehicles and uh, we need to develop really user-centric solutions. As Joanna was saying, uh, at the end of the day, we need to to um, build around the user and the, around the needs of people moving. Then for the autonomous driving, for sure there is a role of the traffic management infrastructure there because we as traffic industry, of course, believe in the fact that for the micro traffic management, the vehicle, the autonomous vehicle will be able to, to manage itself. But when you talk about the efficiency of the road, network and about uh, network level optimization, then we strongly believe that you need a control tower there. So we really see a challenging future for, for the traffic industry. Then of course, connectivity and IoT with all the CITS use cases. Uh, for example, in terms of sustainability, uh, we believe that um, we can come up with new use cases where we can drive, for example, uh, traffic in function of the air quality, or we can apply measure in function of other elements that are not simply congestion levels or levels of service of the transportation network. Of course, uh, in terms of uh, transportation mode shift, we, we really have to integrate all data sources. So uh, with respect to our traffic modeling, there is a lot to do there and to make this shift 
from traffic management to travel management. And um, following with the next slide, I will just have two examples of how we prepare to, to this change. For example, our, our traffic lights changed. We learned and we like to say that, that now our traffic lights are more than red, amber, green. For example, inside the traffic lights, you can have sensors for pedestrian detection or for air quality detection. You could use, for example, additional um, signaling also for, for our modern users. Uh, for example, this, this safe light that is projecting a red light on the crossing is, is designed for the new users that used to look at their phone while crossing the streets. And this is happening on the roadside. I just had this example. And with the next slide, you will also see on the central side, we created a new platform that is uh, taking the best, hopefully, of all existing Svarco platforms and adds more on top. So we learned that traffic management is not only about monitoring and control, but we need to guide users. We need to do all the data analytics. We need to dedicate special features for connecting to the connected vehicles and the connected users generally. And uh, of course, um, I'm sure that uh, I, I'm not saying uh, new things, but what I, I wanted to highlight here that is that really we are preparing to this change. And um, if you go to the next slide, please. And we also change uh, not only as roadside devices or as central platforms, but I feel like as a group, we really change our mission because it's not about producing and, and selling traffic lights and then leave or selling a traffic control algorithm, but really our aims at group level are uh, about people because what we want in the end is to improve quality of life or to support with what we can do about this, simply for making the travel experience safer, quicker, more convenient, and with less uh, bad impact on the environment. And now I'm heading towards the end. If you could go please to the next slide, which is my last slide. Uh, if we talk about evolution of traffic management, uh, we see it like this. Uh, there were the standalone systems where there was actually no communication between the traffic management center and the, the vehicle. It's really the traditional setup. Then we made a step forward and um, it's what we call here TM 1.0 where we have a connection and some information going from one side to another. But with TM 2.0, what we are achieving, it's really collaboration. So interaction and collaboration. And here we want to create a traffic management loop between the center and the user, where we share really all trip data and where the traffic management center shares not only information, but also the plans in order to, to achieve across the road network convergence of objectives. And yes, this is a concept that was born uh, many years ago, but is still alive. And it also got to life as implementation. I just mentioned a few projects here, because when you talk about the traffic management loop, for example, you can talk uh, about this in the mass concept, like my corridor did, where we try to apply traffic management to dot zero to mass. Then for example, in the Phoenix project, we apply TM2.0 to logistics operation. And we talk about multimodality in logistics and how to create and maintain this loop of information. Last but not least, this is also happening when we talk about automation. So we try to bring to life this concept of TM2.0 also in relation to CCAM in the project show, for example. And in closure, I just want to say one more thing. 
we talked about closing loops in terms of data. If we talk about simple traffic management or the mass concept, logistics, automation. But I believe that a key thing is to close loops at, at all levels. Also loops in terms of communication, for example, between the industry and the public authorities in terms of regulation of tenders and how we get feedback from one side to another. And also to close the loop with the policymakers, for example, in order to evolve also the policies and the governance towards this new concept. Because we believe that from a technology point of view, we are ready and we still have some work to do then to align all the other levels. So thank you for your attention. And I have uh, here with me today, great colleagues, great panelists, and looking forward for your questions and for the discussion in the end. Thank you, Laura. And uh, allow me to apologize for coughing. I was ch choking and I didn't know what to do first, the water, the microphone, the camera. <laughs> so I'm so sorry. Um, that was a very uh, interesting presentation and thank you for ending it or, or finishing your presentation with uh, by mentioning the, um, the projects where we actually work together in Show and Phoenix, my corridor, uh, not really, uh, but indeed, it is uh, very important to know that this uh, this topic of, of traffic management, interactive traffic management, or this loop that should be that should exist in this cooperation, uh, it's it's not only when we, uh, applicable for road, but it's it's also or it that it spills over, let's say, to mobility as a service, to uh, uh, automation to logistics, to so many applications because of this uh, loop that should be going from the traffic management to the user and back. Um, and indeed, uh, technology-wise, we are more ready than we are with uh, governance. But let me pass to the next speaker, Pedro Paradas from Armis um, ITS. And he's going to talk to us about the, the fact that the world is changing and mobility too. With Pedro, we have been working uh, also for many years in the TM 2.0 platform. And then uh, he, back then he was working for the European Commission. He was um, uh, head, uh, leading, that's the word, leading the, the group that was discussing traffic management in the CITS platform. And that is where many of these terms like competition and win-win-win actually were uh, uh, born and, and, and developed further. So, Pedro, the microphone is yours. Thank you so much, Joanna. Thank you for, uh, for the invitation. Thank you for your words also. Um, I would like to, um, to compliment my, my colleague from my colleagues uh, in, in the panel. I'm really happy to be there, here with them. They're uh, uh, a, a group of very, um, very good thinkers and out of the box thinkers that um, uh, helped us throughout these years a lot um, while shaping the contents of uh, of the works uh, of the work carried out in the commission, but also in the in the work that um, so enthusiastically I think all of us have uh, been contributing uh, to the traffic management 2.0 platform. So um, and thank you thank you for the invitation and thank you for um, particular for organizing and all those all the support. And, um, and the staff there that, uh, that has been very, very helpful and kind to uh, help us out with this presentation today. So um, going into the presentation as, um, and just uh, presenting myself a little bit and, um, and, uh, and the company I'm now representing, I've been a, a civil servant for all of my professional life, 25 years. Um, uh, four, the last four were spent in, uh, in DigiMove, working as a policy officer. And um, I'm an ITS enthusiast and a traffic management enthusiast. Um, and as Laura was mentioning, I think even if we change uh, life and we change... Uh, uh, so I was living in Brussels and I'm back in Portugal. Uh, even if we keep these changes uh, in, in our lives, we keep, keep coming back to traffic management 2.0 and to these discussions that... Uh, I think we all find very, very interesting and, and keep us going and, uh, you know, um, putting thoughts in, and, and new ideas into our minds and, and pushing things further. 
So um, uh, last year, I, uh, I joined the private sector. I joined the, this company, Armies, which uh, is a, a company um, is a main, mainly a, a system integrator, developing software uh, to apply in transport systems. They have a long track record of, uh, of projects in this field, more than 10 years. So I thought this was a, a great challenge for me and a great opportunity also to come from the policy side and put hands on the topics and try to uh, to help create some of the ideas, some of the concepts that um, that we've been uh, we've been discussing and trying out. So um, I'm going to hopefully share my uh, screen in presentation mode and fingers crossed that everything is is working well. It feels well from this side. I hope you are uh, uh, seeing my screen now. And, uh, and the topic is very, very interesting from loop, uh, from loop to governance. So the title in my, uh, in my presentation for today is uh, The World is Changing Mobility Too. And um, by saying this, I think um, um, I will try to focus the, the presentation in, in the concept of the traffic management 2.0. And also, uh, I think, to highlight that uh, governance is a... Uh, um, the tipping point of a very very complex uh, iceberg in the in the urban landscape, and uh, and this is where I would like to uh, start the presentation discussing about digitalization of transport and what it means for for a city, and here in the in the in the first slide, and I hope that uh, you bear with me throughout the presentation so that I I reach my my points and uh, and you will follow the um, the line of uh, of thinking throughout the presentation it all starts with uh, with common uh, issues that uh, that uh, the cities face today uh, and it starts with the physical world uh, physical world um, i invented uh, different cities not to uh, not to name and shame or to use the current examples but just to to highlight this um, this starting point of the physical world that even common change ch uh, challenges have different approaches from different cities, depending on so many uh, different factors. So here you see in this uh, in these slides the imaginary city of wonder that has this footprint on how to approach these uh, different challenges, from parking to multimodality to uh, mixed traffic conditions uh, to uh, roadworks dealing with roadworks. And um, then again, the topics may be the same, but for instance, in the city of happiness, parking is a much more permanent uh, issue that, uh, that they want to prioritize and they've been investing in to, um, to deal with, uh, with this issue, also intersection and priorities. And you go on, city of fun, city of plenty, and all of them have different, very different uh, footprints. So uh, in a way I'm saying I could be talking about your own city that has your own, that its own uh, fingerprint. It's a result of uh, histories of uh, building uh, physical infrastructure, also uh, the result of the cultural heritage, the geography, the demographics, economics, and also the policy choices that uh, we have been uh, taking forward over the time. And this is to highlight the importance that governance has in all of this. And when it comes to uh, the traffic management and mobility management is a key to understand how uh, to put it in place and how to uh, to to use to make good use of the governance in order to get the best results in uh, in the way we move people and goods around our cities. So um, as I was saying, not only they have the the cultural heritage, but they have the the physical network. And you can see here some well known uh, aerial views of uh, well known cities across the the world. This is what we call the, the physical fingerprint. And what digitalization provides us is the opportunity to, uh, to build um, this uh, digital version of uh, the mobility systems that are there in place. Now, I think one of uh, the misconceptions about digitalization of transport and digitalization as it is, is that we tend to think on building this uh, digital twin of the physical world and it's uh, it's somehow misleading because uh, for example if you have a, a sheet of paper a white sheet of paper uh, which is a physical representation of an idea you want to put in ink on on into it 
and if by chance you have the you know the the bad luck of having a typo there or a, gr a grammatical error and then you you go to your digitizer and you have a pdf you have a digital version but the, the typo and the, the grammatical error still remain in the di digital universe so what we are uh, what I'm trying to say is that digitalization needs to be understood in a way different than building a, a digital twin, but rather as an opportunity to really rethink the systems and the way the systems integrate and communicate with each other to make, make better use of it and actually provide intelligence to all of it, because that's where we get the flexibility and optimization of the systems since the network, the physical network, it's much more difficult to, uh, to manage and, uh, and start and continue re refurbishing, not only for the inconveniences, but also for the type of, uh, of investments. And I think this has been very well understood and, and sadly demonstrated with, uh, with the, the, you know, the, the lessons from COVID. Resilience is uh, one of the key um, new words that has popped up in our in our conversations so far, because we feel that um, uh, the introduction of this social distancing has really um, uh, questioned our models and uh, and the way we approach transport. And we see that uh, the world actually changed a lot. Uh, very recently, we see in supermarkets where in uh, uh, sports supermarkets, the empty shelves for where the bikes used to be, so people rush to buy uh, bikes. Also, uh, some cities have reclaimed a lot of pedestrian public space, and this has impact on, on the mobility systems there. Uh, we have witnessed the impact on public transport with the decrease of, uh, of demand. And for months we saw you know, this uh, yeah, with, a, with a very sad um, um, feeling. We saw these buses going around empty carrying no one uh, to uh, to these coast stops where um, yeah no one would would, uh, would, be, would would be there waiting for for uh, for the bus to 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 go somewhere and um, and we I think we are going to uh, witness uh, now with uh, with the school year um, coming up uh, an increase on on traffic and on congestion which is very difficult to um, to to cope with even further when we, we know very well what kind of goals we are committed to in terms of decarbonization and the greening of transport and, and the green deal that, uh, that uh, Europe is pushing for with very, very solid deadlines and, um, and, and milestones to, uh, to, to, uh, to commit. So landing a little bit where uh, I was, and going uh, uh, in depth in, in the thinking of how ITS, how the, the concepts um, can be put in place. And, and because this is a, a very complex landscape, I'm going now again, go back to the, the imaginary uh, field of uh, um, uh, an, an identified city, but that has more or less the same issues than, um, than that you can relate to parking and access management, um, multi-road uh, transport um, and, and multi-road operators to, uh, with different contracts to, to oversee. You have the, the, the road infrastructure to manage and also the communications network to manage and the traffic control systems. And digitalization is this uh, kind of a veil that uh, falls within uh, on top of, uh, of the physical world and here we, we, we represented this with this orange square, uh, which is um, you know, the core elements of one of the products that we've been developing. And this, um, this is the first layer where we, we get away from some of the complexity that most of the cities face when they're going in and diving into ITS, which is dealing with the European standards and the, the technical and functional specifications. Um, the Datex, the Inspire, the NetExes, and the, the series, all of this uh, is the result of more than 10 years of, uh, of work and that is synthesized here in this, uh, in this orange layer. But that would represent the efforts of the European Commission to ensure that the systems, the transport systems, are fully interoperable and, and that the services uh, have continuity uh, Although they're being developed, um, for instance, in Portugal, we're pretty sure that by following these standards, 
the services will for sure work in other cities such as in Austria or in, in Germany. But on top of, of this interoperability layer, there's, there's another uh, layer, the operation model, and this is where we start bring, bringing the intelligence into the system, into the digitalization of the transport systems. We start creating the interfaces and the interconnections in between the, all of the systems, the nodes, uh, the digital nodes that we, we want to, to, uh, to address, to manage and to operate so that uh, all the, the data coming from um, the different systems may be of use. Uh, this, uh, this fuel, this new fuel that uh, the, U the European Commission was mentioning as uh, data being the new oil for, um, for, uh, for the future is exactly this, um, this, uh, this feeling. And, and we've, we've seen and we see, we will continue to see more in the future that this movement towards uh, a data and uh, market approach is going to be uh, present there in the, in the in the near future and we see uh, projects such as uh, the the federation of the national access points coming together so uh, a, a digital data layer um, going accordingly to the standards all over europe to ensure interoperability and continuity of services but also uh, 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 addressing questions such as the, the secured um, aspects, the, um, the digital sovereignty of, of the data across the member states. So everything um, that has to do with this uh, has been uh, put forward in this uh, EU data strategy. And we see other movements such as a, a new project called Gaia X that is actually coming in the same direction uh, with a smaller group of uh, front runner member states that are exactly uh, pursuing this, uh, this data layer. What we can build or a city can build from this digital infrastructure is a kind of an operation setting. And what you see there um, in the vertical is, is um, what I, I'm calling the urban mobility dashboard. It's, um, it's, it's a dashboard that allows uh, the city to control all the telematics, the cameras, the VMSs, the traffic lights, the sensors, but also the data coming from the IOTs that are installed there. Uh, and it's the, the, the beginning of understanding the digital infrastructure and taking, taking advantage of it. But it doesn't stop there. It's also about the communication networks, the needs for storage and cloud, edge computing, the big data, and also the links for the national access points. Uh, so, we are transforming flows of, uh, of traffic into flows of data and we're uh, reusing the same concepts but uh, uh, translating those into a more digital uh, approach. What you see in the next uh, slide is exactly this dashboard popping up and depending on, on the city and on the priorities, depending on the governance, you are going to uh, use the systems that you have in place and you are going to look for uh, improving the operations uh, of, uh, of your system, looking at the KPIs that you want to, uh, to address, thinking on your policy goals that you want to achieve. What this, um, this uh, product that we are developing offers that is really fresh and new is also the possibility to create a framework for developers to take up their own um, data categories that they see fit for developing their own uh, apps. So by means of just um, drag and drop on this uh, framework, you can use a lot of functionalities and tools, for instance, uh, for uh, geofence a, a certain area of the city to drop, drag and drop a few uh, cameras uh, that you want to use for monitoring the speed limits for of that uh, of that area or whatever or to prioritize uh, a certain type of vehicle uh, and these are the business models uh, that are very specific from from the point of view of a specific city's needs and uh, that we are allowing um, um, the the developers to uh, to use so instead of um, instead of providing solutions we are aiming to uh, be a part of a community of developers that really uses this, uh, these networks to kind of uh, 
as if it was a, a sustainable urban mobility app store where you develop your own uh, um, using your own code, your own sources, your own resources, you develop the, the apps you want to establish uh, for your, uh, your, um, your city. And we want to do this as user friendly as possible, uh, taking away some of the complexities of these first layers that, uh, that I was uh, talking about and actually providing a, a framework for the, the traffic planners, the traffic managers, and also the, the developers to come together and develop these apps that can be later on made available on, on the App Store, as I was mentioning, and, uh, and used for others because the, the interoperability and continuity issues are, are almost solved there as a, a baseline, uh, according to the framework that we are trying to create. So in this manner, we are no longer uh, thinking about passive traffic management, pretty much uh, the opposite. We are promoting active uh, traffic management. Uh, we are going beyond managing incidents, but rather having uh, um, bugs fixed in the transport, in the digital transport system. And um, so we, we can have, uh, take advantage of digitalization to really be flexible um, towards the, the, the issues that we want to address. So things like fleet management optimization based on real-time demand, which is uh, something very useful for COVID uh, nowadays, is something that could be possible to develop in this framework. Also routing management and uh, in the limit, you could think on completely transforming a, a public transport fleet uh, of a regular transport to uh, adapt it itself to, to function as transport on demand. But uh, as I was saying, this is a long way ahead of us. We need to establish a community of people to, uh, to work with and, uh, and to start, uh, you know, uh, stop uh, dreaming about these, um, these, these things, but actually start developing these tools, these apps that are required for uh, aiming uh, to the goals that we want to, to achieve. So in blue, these are some of the dreams and uh, that we have, very tangible uh, uh, dreams like corridor, the, the most simple ones like corridor management and public transport uh, prioritization to the long, uh, longer term ones like um, uh, connected and uh, cooperative automated mobility on demand or the fully uh, approach on the mobility services orchestration. And these are concepts that we've been discussing together in the platform. Now, all of this technology approach may be very, you know, appealing, but uh, let me go back to the point I wanted to make for the beginning in my presentation, because after all, we need to deconstruct and get back to the basic, which is the governance and the policy options that the city uh, has to, to promote. And hopefully with this presentation, I'm able to, uh, um, inspire some of uh, you and some of the cities to uh, to look into this as a, a process for really putting in place some of the concepts that we've been um, uh, fostering together with Joanne and the other partners in, in traffic management 2.0 that you see here in this uh, last slide the co-optation nudging the user for a behavioral change uh, getting to identify those win-win win business models to make sure that uh, the orchestration of services is done according to a, dis a decentralized decision making, making sure that the trust in between the public and the private is there to ensure uh, a fruitful co collaboration and, uh, and to, uh, to allow a, a framework for the system's priority priorities to be negotiated. Ultimately, traffic management 2.0 and mobility as a service, service coming together as a, a, a reality. My last takeaway, and this came uh, yesterday while uh, at the General Assembly, I think um, there's a, still a long uh, way ahead of us, but uh, we should uh, plan this. And what I feel personally is that uh, the, the role and responsibility for this, uh, this future profession that I don't uh, yet know the name, um, but I, I, I'm assuming it's not a data scientist, but probably a mobility scientist in the future that is able to take up this role and this responsibility inside the city needs to be embedded in, in, the, in the concept of urban planning. 
So I think we we are going to take this challenge to to our shoulders to uh, to create this uh, this profile and to embed it in the in the strategic in the the sustainable urban mobility planning um, with uh, the aim of bringing this uh, this to life, which is a, a key element to uh, to bring all of these stakeholders together, acting as a glue, but also acting as the the, um, the 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 keeper of uh, of the policy options and the governance options that the city wants to uh, to promote, and this is all from from my part in, in the presentation. Really thankful for uh, for being here. Yeah, I forgot a few clicks, and um, and you have my my email uh, in the presentation, and of course I'll be ready for any questions. Thank you, Joanna. Floor is yours. Thank you, Pedro. That, that was a very interesting presentation and and interesting work that you're doing there with the urban mobility dashboard. And I like the the new profession of the uh, future the future profession of the mobility scientist. Maybe it's it's a combination of science and stakeholder management and engagement because it needs again this technology and governance. Um, and coming together in a, in a in a in a perfect balance, especially when we're talking about mobility, and multimodal mobility. Thank you very much, Pedro. Allow me to to pass the floor to our uh, next panelist, who is uh, Wolfgang Ponweiser from the Austrian Institute of Technology. With Wolfgang, we are uh, together involved in the discussions and the preparation of the CCAM uh, European Partnership. We are we we are perfectly aligned with with, with what regards uh, traffic management and how important it is, and also how important the user is. Eh? So you are uh, going to be discussing about uh, from the user to the system and back. And um, I'm I'm sure your presentation is is visionary as well. Thank you very much, Wolfgang. Um, thank you, Joanna. Um, hello and welcome, everybody. Uh, Friday afternoon, and uh, I hope I can uh, give you some 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 new insights. Of course, uh, I have to thank Joanna for the invitation, uh, Ertico, and uh, uh, also the TM 2.0 uh, platform for keeping traffic management uh, as, a, as a topic itself up. Uh, I think this is extremely important. Um, before I start my presentation and also probably my personal introduction, um, uh, Joanna, your your introduction to the to the to the workshop remembered me on a on a it's not a joke it's it's a it's a reality, uh, but uh, it is a, it is a story of a of a small village in in Austria. Uh, they have the uh, unlucky situation that uh, if the highway is congested. Um, the shortest way um, through is uh, exactly through their village. So what uh, the mayor is doing there as a real practical traffic management today is, uh, whenever the situation appears that there is congestion on the highway, he really takes a, a lot of uh, smartphones and uh, traffic uh, and, and routing devices. Uh, he has a way label uh, in his uh, in his back and. Uh, jumps on the bicycle, uh, moves the bicycle through his village from one end to the other as slow as he can, uh, simply to uh, virtually show a kind of congestion through his village. Uh, and um, yeah, so to push uh, all the all the database uh, navigation devices uh, to push the, the shortest trip back to the highway and not through his village. So that's um, uh, practical uh, traffic management uh, of today. Uh, or if you said this uh, this way, uh, geofencing, <laughs> uh, as you mentioned it, I'm pretty sure this is uh, a little bit different in Zurich. Uh, but yeah, there is uh, su such uh, things happen uh, today. So um, AIT, uh, the Austin Institute of Technology, is the largest research in, uh, non-universal institute in, in Austria. Um, and uh, I'm personally there since uh, more than 10 years now. And uh, more or less uh, always in the area of ITS and uh, traffic management. Uh, but the, 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 
one of the first things I, I definitely learned here is, uh, first of all, we look at mobility as a, as a system. And the second thing is uh, that the user should be uh, in the center of your uh, of, of all your ideas and all your uh, activities. So, um, yeah. I, I usually tend to to um, to be a bit short in in, in, in or, or to, to make some shortcuts. So uh, I have to state at the beginning, um, as a mobility research center, um, we are we are fully aware and we are fully in in, in, in the heart that uh, that we have to look at the, the mobility system in a multimodal way. Uh, obviously, we have to promote active mobility, especially in cities. Um, we are fully aware of the concept that uh, if you increase capacity, you more or less also increase demand. So it's not, uh, not that uh, the, the fully solution to, to traffic management, for example, to just uh, uh, increase capacity and so on. So these things we are fully aware, although in, in probably the, the one project or one approach uh, or another one, uh, we just stick back to just the uh, road transport and so on. So this is uh, something I have to state right from the beginning. Okay, so, but um, Joanna asked me to, uh, yeah, um, to state what is what we think and I think what is important and uh, what are the things we, we should do. So, uh, next slide, please. Um, coming from the user to the system. In an ideal world, and if you look at a lot of uh, papers and, and concepts that are out there, in fact, as a user, my trip uh, is known and managed as soon as I know about it. Um, I want to go to cinema, uh, like uh, in, in Joanna's example, and as soon as I have the idea I want to go to the cinema, this is known by the system. This is an ideal world uh, we simply don't have. Um, until then, uh, we have this situation. We have to estimate the travel demand in tons of other ways, uh, ideally based on, on, on other data. Um, please, another click. Uh, just to give you an, an, an idea, uh, there are, for example, smartphone-based uh, trip reconstructions, uh, so that uh, you can uh, easily reconstruct uh, your daily trips, your typical and partially also some 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 weekend trips and so on. So that you can even estimate uh, the demand that is uh, expected to appear on the uh, on the on the network. Uh, so these things are quite important. So we have to look at all the different ways um, we can we can uh, get an idea of the demand. Although uh, there are a lot of concepts out that simply ignore this thing and uh, uh, and, and say, yeah, we we already know this demand, which is simply not the case right now. Um, okay, next slide, please. Um, the second point, of course, uh, this there is not a single system. There are tons of different uh, systems and, uh, and, uh, and things out there. Uh, in an ideal world, uh, once again, the relevant data is available wherever necessary. Um, until then, we have to we have to think, we have to plan, and we have to manage under uncertainty. Uh, simply because this data is not accessible, uh, simply because also, and that's another important point of uncertainty, is we have to deal with users. Um, these are people, and people behave uh, in a quite complex and uh, very difficult to predict way. Um, if you click another time. So, uh, one one measure to at least uh, reduce the uncertainty is uh, by by modeling. And uh, I'm pretty sure you all know these kind of uh, simulations and modeling tools that are out there. What we are trying to do as a, as a research institute is 
um, in fact to enrich uh, these kind of models with uh, a, a, a much higher uh, um, uh, part on understanding uh, of the human behavior. Um, probably uh, you know this kind of, uh, of survey stuff for example, if you have a, a, a survey that, um, that asks about your daily trip and so on, of course, uh, you can create some preferences out of uh, such uh, mobility books. Um, still, you don't know in this case uh, how a, uh, um, with, with, with these revealed preferences, as they are called in, in, in science, you, you have no idea how uh, a human behavior would react if something is changed. For example, if we introduce a new, a new bridge over a, uh, a river, if you introduce a, a new service, if you introduce a new uh, road or a new public transport opportunity and so on. Um, the other way around is what we call stated preferences. Um, of course, you can ask people if they like e-mobility, if they want to uh, ride more bikes, if they have more infrastructure available, so on and so forth. Also there, uncertainty is involved because uh, usually people, if they are not asked in their specific context, but just in a general context, of course they want to be more green, more efficient, uh, more sportive, more active, uh, and so on. So in both cases, you have to deal with uncertainty. And these are exactly the issues we try to improve from a scientific point of view and to, uh, to come out with knowledge that improves these kind of already existing modeling and uh, also probably future techniques uh, of modelings. Uh, how to get all these insights uh, from uh, human behavior into this kind of modeling. Uh, in, simply to reduce the uncertainty we have to deal with in traffic management and, uh, and uh, transport planning. Okay, next slide please. And of course, um, we have to somehow close the loop. Uh, just because the system knows something what would be a good, uh, a good idea, uh, uh, in an ideal world, uh, the user is then completely managed in his way from A to B in a system optimal way. Some people call this idea mass mobility as a service. Uh, to be honest, uh, I, I heard mass a bit too often, but uh, in fact, this is the core idea of mobility as a service. Uh, so that not the user um uh, decides in fact on his uh, on his trip uh, but he, the system tells the user what would be a system optimal way to come from a to b um, so until then once again uh, what we the only things we can do is we can nudge a user towards such a system aware optimum uh, and to make things even more complicated, uh, we have to do this obviously in a distributed stakeholder landscape. Uh, there is uh, not anymore a single highway operator who decides on all the things that uh, uh, happen on the highway, uh, all the information uh, that is known. This is already a distributed uh, stakeholder landscape and we have to find the ways uh, how we can deal with that uh, in, 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 in with such a distributed uh, situation, um, and uh, as far as I understand, uh, TM2.0 is exactly on this point. How to do this? Um, yes, please another click. Uh, from our side, um, what we want to to do here is, of course. Uh, if we want to nudge the user to a system optimum, to system aware optimum behavior, of course we have to know how this really should look like. Um, what you can see here is a, uh, a, uh, a concept we try to develop, um, uh, which looks at the performance gain or the capacity gain uh, that we can achieve 
simply by uh, taking system optimal routes and not just user optimal routes. Uh, so what this means is that uh, sometimes a user has to take uh, a, a bit longer route, uh, but if you look at the sum of all travel times, which is uh, uh, marked here in, in, this, in these diagrams, um, this sum of all uh, travel times can be reduced enormously if we do some reroutings of some uh, network users. Um, of course, this is uh, so far a, a, a theoretical analysis. Um, there are a lot of question marks uh, around, uh, but it gives a first indication on uh, on the level of uh, travel time gain we can achieve with a system aware routing. Um, next uh, click, please. But of course, not to forget um, what we in fact have to achieve is a behavior change. So um, on the on the left side, you have a kind of a theoretical part of it, um, but you have to deal with the user. And uh, if you look at the, this kind of research, uh, you have to tackle uh, a lot of issues. We try to split this uh, research into three parts. One is uh, to identify uh, homogeneous groups uh, to, in fact, also reduce the complexity because of obviously every human being is, uh, is, uh, uh, has his own behavior and so on. But to reduce the complexity, you have to identify groups. And uh, we, are, we are used to uh, socioeconomic groups. Um, people with the same age, with the same income, and so on. This is not a correct group for uh, looking into mobility behavior. Uh, uh, my beloved uh, example is always that someone who has a heavy suitcase has probably the same mobility uh, capabilities as someone is sitting in a wheelchair. Uh, so uh, at some places they are in the same um, uh, mobility behavior group. So uh, that's uh, just to give you an, uh, an idea. So after identifying, um, I have to involve users. I have to involve the human beings. Um, here also, uh, obviously, a lot of people say, uh, yeah, okay, let's do a, yet another living lab. Um, this is also not the trivial case. Uh, it's not just setting up a, a living lab, uh, have some discussions with the with the users, and that's it. Uh, especially personally, I'm absolutely no fan of this concept that the user is his own best expert. Uh, there's so many uh, discrepancies in what people would like to be and what they really be, um, and uh, so there is there are tons of different concepts on how to involve. Um, people in analysis in um, in the in the uh, detection of uh, mobility behavior, and of course, finally, and the most important thing is how to inspire, how to really come to this point that people uh, change their behavior. Uh, this is a lot about uh, um, communication channels. This is a lot about motivation factors and so on. So these are in very, very important uh, uh, research directions. We, I have the feeling we, we, we are just on the, at the first steps, uh, but they are extremely crucial if we want to achieve uh, an effect at the end, uh, besides some regulatory issues where we can pressure uh, the people into a specific uh, behavior. Um, as, uh, for example, in the first presentation we saw today, uh, we still have a very limited set of, uh, of measures we have on the street. Uh, it's still the main, the, the traffic light is the main source of, uh, um, of measure. So we have to be much more creative in, in this direction. Okay, next slide, please. So, um, yeah, <laughs> this is the one I was looking for. Uh, 
Uh, conclusions. Um, as you saw in, 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 in all the, the, the starting point of, uh, of my slides, uh, it is extremely important that you make clear what you're talking about. Um, there's so many analysis and, uh, and, and uh, arguments out which are simply wrong because looking, for example, in automation, yes, automation can do this and that. Um, yes, but under extreme, very extreme uh, circumstances, uh, you have to clarify which automation level you mean, if they are connected, if they are electric, and so on. Um, so please be more careful in uh, all the things you, you you state and make the context clear. Uh, second point I probably didn't touch in, in, in the description so far. Uh, from our point, of course, we still uh, have to improve ITS technology, but uh, most of the technology is already there. The deployment that we definitely miss is uh, a matter of stakeholder cooperation. Once again, a link to traffic team 2.0. Uh, very happy that this platform exists. Um, another point is how large must our upcoming revolutions be? Um, can we live with incremental steps or have do we have to change the entire mobility system? Or is there something in between? And of course, uh, final point is um, take the user on board. Uh, at least our concept is uh, identify, involve, inspire. Um, and um, I, I had a I had a long thought on my on my title because it says from the user to the system and back. This is a loop which fits to the to the title of the of the uh, workshop today. But in fact, the user should be in the center, not just the starting at the end point. So. That's all from my side. That's uh, that's perfect, Volkan. Thank you very much. Very interesting presentation. Um, incremental steps or a new mobility as uh, as a whole. That's a very yeah yeah. That's a long discussion, and I I really like where this is going. Unfortunately, we we are not doing well with our time management here. With traffic management discussions we're doing well with time management no um so i am uh, i just want to say that um, this whole idea of nudging people inspiring people to change has to happen at the same time with regulation and and governance because people uh, it's one of our human uh, characteristics we uh, ab uh, abide to laws and regulations easier than uh, than than when we have to all agree with it and, and so on, I think. Um, but let me go to um, uh, our next panelist, uh, Biagio, Dr. Biagio Ciuffo from, uh, from the JRC. He has a beautiful scenery. He's in Italy at the moment. And we are going to hear a very um, interesting uh, presentation on, on automated vehicles or automated uh, road transport setting the level of ambition to disrupt so the 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 microphone is yours thank you very much Piaggio. thanks joanna i will uh, try uh, to be very short because i'm standing between you and your holidays and you're running out of time uh, so just to tell you i mean in case you don't know the joint research center is the scientific body of the european commission so we, what we try to do with our research is to inspire uh, the, develop, the political development at the European level. Um, I think I will skip uh, most of my slides, so you can go uh, to the next slide. Um, and again, to the next slide. So what I wanted to say, to start with, is that uh, um, probably uh, with the new commission, the von der Leyen commission, uh, I think one of the, the biggest uh, uh, news for, for this group on traffic management is maybe for the, the, the first time in the, in the strategy of the European Commission, the role of smart traffic management uh, is, has become so prominent. So it's not just one of the elements that can contribute to make mobility more sustainable, but it's really one of the main uh, points together with the digitalization of uh, the, the transportation system, overall transportation system. Uh, of course, this is not, was, was not the first time traffic management is there, 
uh, in the cooperation concept of the CCIM, the Connected Cooperative Automated Mobility concept, the cooperation for me is an element crucial for the for for the enhanced traffic management. Let's say, and of course, as was also mentioned before, uh, Pedro was um, uh, in in the past years managing uh, the uh, was leading the CITS platform uh, to which I think most of you have already participated, in which they saw the importance of traffic management with the role of the public authorities acting as orchestra conductor. Uh, I think we can go to the next slide. Um, um, although traffic management, uh, for me, it, it, it has a, a really cru will have a cru crucial role in, in the future, especially to um, achieve the promises uh, that connected automated mobility uh, uh, brings to improve road transport and reduce its externalities, uh, there are still narratives that, uh, in reality, automated vehicles will be so intelligent not to need this. Uh, but I think Wolf, Wolfgang before already mentioned some of the reasons uh, why this is not necessarily the case, uh, uh, and also mentioned the fact that in reality, indeed, if you the objective is just to increase uh, road capacity, uh, the the outcome is uh, on the long term uh, can also be uh, more negative than uh, thought at the beginning. So if we go to the slide, and also again to the next again. Okay, so the, the, the full concept of, of our research at the, at the GRC is really to go much, uh, much more into the future, thinking about the in, in inclusion of the vehicle into the, the transportation system uh, as just one of the way the mobility demand can be satisfied. So automated vehicle connected to the network can enable a uh, totally you know, unprecedented uh, way to manage the demand supply uh, interaction. And this is not uh, something new. Uh, Wolfgang already mentioned the concept of the system optimum. Actually, the concept of the system optimum uh, can date back to the, the 50s uh, for, and was originally presented by uh, Professor Wardrop um, uh, and can be achieved uh, uh, by the central authority, as mentioned by Laura at the beginning, by a central platform, as mentioned by um, uh, Pedro uh, later on. Uh, but what is important to understand is that the system optimum requires a much deeper connection uh, between the uh, traffic management system and the user. So uh, in the end, the system auto can only be achieved is a traffic management system provide the user with personalized information uh, to route it throughout the, 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 the best possible uh, uh, um, option, to give the, the user the best possible option to, in the, to ma maximize the efficiency of the system. Again, though, here again, we are talking about maximizing efficiency, increasing capacity. Uh, and if we, we forget that uh, the, the, the transportation system is a complex system and, and interacts with other systems, uh, we may be surprised that after a certain time that the system has become so efficient uh, due to the activation of new uh, economy, um, uh, economic activities, due to the, to, to, the, to the shift from one mode to another, the congestion level can uh, still can become again uh, as big as before or even or even higher so that's why uh, in in our concept of the automated tr road transport uh, uh, as uh, today uh, as, uh, wolf mentioning a very nice example for a city in in austria uh, the way that city mayor the only way that city mayor have to reduce congestion in their city is to be, make road transport as complex as challenging as possible for the for the users uh, so increasing the, the reducing the number of parking increasing the parking price um, uh, geofencing uh, part of the city uh, and i think in, in the end this creates uh, also fairness problem creates a lot of tension between uh, people and, and the authority and uh, so in a way there is a uh, just a prohibition in order to solve a, a problem. In reality, if in, in addition to routing the future of uh, traffic management, so in, in, in really in 20, 30 years, when all the vehicles will be automated and connected, uh, can go even beyond. And I think this is really embodying the concept of the CCIM. So what is the, the CCIM in my, my perspective? Is the idea that we don't, are not, our mobility needs are not any longer linked to a, speci a specific mode of transport. So it, there must be, at a certain point, uh, a platform, a service, to which we just express our mobility need, and the service provides us different opportunities 
to, to satisfy those needs. And th among these different opportunities, there could be the option, for example, to take our car, our personal car, if we decide to, uh, to own, own one, uh, to be driven starting at a certain time uh, in order to reach the, desti the desired destination uh, um, into, um, uh, into the, the desired uh, time, uh, at, the desi at the desired time. Of course, road access, vehicle routing, imposing from outside seem quite kind of limitation of our, uh, of our freedom. But in the end, I think nobody um, complains that he, he cannot access an airplane whenever he needs or a train whenever he needs. It is just that uh, 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 aviation and railway system are capacity constrained system because they have a physical capacity um, uh, and temporal capacity which is uh, uh, dictated by the governance of the system itself. The road is the only system that is used as if it has, has no capacity. So we, one, a person can enter the road even if it's not fully, fully congested. And this does not create a level playing field uh, with the other transport mode. So in the end, the, the idea of the art, so the automated road transport, is that each vehicle would have also the, the uh, a time slot for accessing uh, the road in order to maintain certain political objective um, uh, under control. And this political objective can be the reliability of the service, can be the, 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 the travel time, can be uh, the, the emissions, the energy consumption, uh, whatever is more important in the specific period and for, uh, for the specific context. We'll go to the next slide. As Wolf, Wolfgang was already uh, mentioning, um, in order, first of all, in order to get there, uh, research and technology is still needed because uh, at the moment there are not really solutions that could really provide uh, such a kind of optimization uh, and uh, um, managing all the data that are needed uh, for for doing uh, such a, a control, let's say, of the overall multimodal uh, transport system. Uh, and indeed, um, as, as also Laura was mentioned at the beginning, in the future, we're not probably not talking any longer about traffic management, but, uh, but of mobility management, uh, travel management, transport management, because it's the entire system that in a way should be managed to keep its efficiency under control. But what is important is that even if we are probably far uh, from uh, uh, the moment in which this is, is, uh, is possible, we, what we need to do is to start uh, 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 interacting with the user because in the end every transportation system every governance model that, that we uh, think of that we can invent uh, as researcher as policy maker as uh, 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 as private companies uh, have to uh, satisfy the mobility needs of people because in the end this is uh, all about um, and people uh, we all know how people are reluctant in changing uh, uh, the transport sector. Uh, there was also a recent Eurobarometer survey that we uh, carried out uh, showing that people also thinking about connected automated mobility are not re really ready for such a kind of transition. And that's why we believe that the concept um, of the living lab should be uh, uh, put forward in order to start the discussion with the one, not just discussing as Wolf, Wolf was mentioned before, not just as a discussion of the people as experts, no, having people uh, acting as uh, uh, supporting the co-design. So to understand deeply the needs, the mobility needs of the people, how uh, easy it is to um, satisfy them by means of any technological solution that, that, uh, or governance model that we uh, may have in mind. Uh, so living lab cities uh, is something which goes beyond because uh, it's the entire, um, uh, uh, the entire city, the, an entire context that becomes a living lab in, in which the users are part of the development process and can influence the technological and the political government, uh, uh, the development process. Um, uh, as, uh, uh, as uh, <laughs> sorry, um, uh, as a just uh, to also test this kind of concept, uh, we also um, establish a living lab in our uh, East Prasite site uh, uh, at the GRC, and we will uh, we will really look forward to understand better how this can support the the, the scientific development and the political process. I think I can stop here to allow some questions. Thanks a lot. Oh, you're brilliant, Biagio. Thank you very much. Fantastic time management. Um, so 
Uh, we we don't have time for a lot of questions, but if you allow me to stay for online for a couple of minutes more, so we can uh, wrap it up and maybe have the chance to discuss two points, um, it would be great. So, um, Biagio, uh, I heard we we also met yesterday at the at the um, steering body of, of TM 2.0 and we had the chance to discuss, but what also is a, one of the points that you're always raising is that the CCAM, the Connected uh, um, Cooperative uh, Automated Vehicles, they are designed, and you said it now as well, uh, having uh, safety as, as a priority in mind, not so much traffic management, and we don't know, we are not yet ready for how they're going to be in mixed traffic. Eh? And, and what you said, that CCAM is all about the mobility and should not be limited to a specific mode and, and it should be rather the user that is going to be receiving this information from the system or the platform on the optimal way to go from A to B. This is exactly this uh, mobility uh, network management that we are discussing also in, uh, in, in TM 2.0 and always uh, the JRC and yourself are very visionary in your research and I thank you enormously for that because you are also an inspiration for us. Um, let me go to some of the questions. I have a question, I think, Biagio, it's for you. Um, how do you think, the question is, how do you think if we came up with 100% of cabs of connected automated vehicles someday, how should they use road network capacity? enter the network and form congestions following users' intentions to start moving immediately, or should they be guided and scheduled centrally to provide smooth flows, um, restricting users' intentions, intention for immediate start? So I think it's very much uh, connect, uh, uh, related to you, um, Biagio? Yes, yes, thanks. Uh, well, I um, anticipated a bit during the presentation, but I, uh, so the concept um, is to shift from uh, the, the freedom in the single action uh, to the freedom to achieve uh, uh, the best mobility uh, possible for the people. So the, the, the concept of uh, uh, fully uh, connected automated, so level five uh, vehicles, 100% connected automated vehicle, uh, is to use them uh, to serve in the best possible way the mobility of the person. So if the uh, the person has to go from A to B to reach B at a certain uh, time. Uh, it will have the possibility to uh, use the vehicle if the, 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 it asks for the possibility for doing it, uh, if it is compatible with the status of the system. Otherwise, there will be other opportunities by, for example, a shared automated vehicle or uh, by a mix of other modes, uh, but uh, everything uh, combined to achieve uh, an automated mobility system which is not connected to the specific mode uh, of the transportation system. Of course, everybody can uh, as will have the freedom to own uh, its own vehicle, but not the freedom to use the road transport as it is today and creating the, the, the confusion that it is today, basically. Uh, because uh, the, the issue of traffic management today is that, uh, uh, and it was uh, it is funny because uh, the idea of the or orchestra conductor uh, during a conference that I attended when I presented this, uh, the chair told me, yes, nice the orchestra conductor. In reality, the traffic is a mess and you would need a DJ to manage it, not really an orchestra conductor. And I totally share this, that uh, today traffic managers have to solve a Gordian knot, something which is impossible to solve with basically no solution, no information, which is really <laughs> amazing. It is it is many systems together to be coordinated, especially the mobility one with a mul, mul, in a multimodal mobility system. Of course, thank you, thank you, Biagio. I have another question. Um, it's addressed to Pedro, and it says, um, "What are for you the main gains for a city or public authority in joining TM 2.0?" I'm guessing it's the concept, how to follow the concept of TM 2.0 of competition. Pedro. Thank you, Joanna. Uh, just clicking in the button. Um, could you please say again the, the question? I'm sorry because... Uh, so I'm, the question I'm... is from Ricardo, our friend, Ricardo Tiago. Uh, it's a long one. I'm reading the last part where he says, what are for you the 
you because you have been you pass through the civil servant position so you have this uh, you can combine the understanding and the thinking of the public and the private sector. And the question is, what are for you the main gains for a city or a public authority in joining TM 2.0? And I'm guessing he doesn't mean the platform, but the concept of TM 2.0. Well, thank you for, uh, for this very complex uh, question, Joanna and Ricardo. From my point of view, um, the gains are, uh, are are very high. Uh, Biagio was referring to um, to something that I, I think we've all been studying and trying to address, which is the individual optimal and uh, the collective uh, optimum uh, when we, we look at traffic as a system. And, um, and the gains we have from uh, collaborating with each other are huge uh, in terms of uh, capacity gains. And this is talking about only the road transport. Uh, if we if we export this uh, to a multimodal um, uh, landscape, which is the natural landscape in in any city, I would say that this is an opportunity for uh, starting a process, uh, engaging with the platform and the terminology, also with the concepts, and start uh, a roadmap for investing in in building up this uh, digital infrastructure that would allow players to come together and identify those business models that I'm sure we'll find easily. Sorry. <coughs> Once you establish a, a common understanding. Oh my. That's, that's my okay, Pedro. <coughs> it's uh, opt for the water. Don't, don't, um, <laughs> it happened to me too. Apologies. Uh, no once you establish the common ground for understanding what uh, and every system has to gain in terms of uh, reaching out for further uh, demand or diversifying the portfolio for uh, the supply for different uh, for uh, segmenting different uh, supplies that need to be um, to be um, uh, complement for different demands that need to be supplied so sorry no no worries no worries it's we're human, of course. Um, okay, thank you very much, Pedro. And and I have a last question, which is uh, addressed to Laura, and it says, "Do you think the growth of city living and increased density will continue in light of the current COVID pandemic, or will people want to move out of cities, particularly as home working has been shown to be a viable viable option?" And mm, that is a very good question. Yeah, it's a very good question and of course I would love to have the answer, but uh, the answer is, of course, we don't know. I believe that in the long term we will still have urbanization as a trend because hopefully what happens now is not strong enough to to invert the, the uh, trend. Um, still, even if this will happen, I think we will still talk about metropolitan areas. So we won't talk about hidden villages on the top of the mountain, but we will talk maybe uh, of the increase of the metropolitan area and of the road network. So in, yeah, in our vision, this is how we see it. Great, thank you. And the last <laughs> question to Wolfgang. Uh, the question is from the system to user, how you can manage a user and how to inspire. Yes, you were talking about inspiring and managing users, but how are you going to do this? And, and to, to give you some information, we are already trying to inspire the user and nudge them with financial incentives and with giving them options in the, in the different uh, wishes of the public authorities or the agreements between the stakeholders. From your perspective, from the Austrian Institute of, uh, of Technology, the in research, how do you see this? Um, there is, there's, unfortunately, there's not a, a, a simple or a, a single answer. Um, that's why we start with this identify because um, there, there is not a homogeneous one single homogeneous group of uh, of users. Um, so you have to consider these people from from their uh, different habits, from their different preferences. So there are 
uh, certain groups of people that uh, really react, for example, to financial incentives. Um, others are much more motivated uh, by, for example, um, having this kind of uh, um, arguments like greening and, and the CO2 reduction and so on. Um, uh, others are simply, they stick to their habits. So, for example, this is the, the very hard group you have to deal with, uh, with law and with hard uh, measures. So, uh, unfortunately, there's not a single answer to that. Um, uh, it is a complex uh, question, uh, situation, but, um, uh, and that's uh, more or less what we are uh, uh, focusing into with our research, is to at least come closer to uh, uh, give you an answer. Of course, it's also situation dependent. Um, but uh, whoever asks the question, I would be, uh, of course, in favor to go more into detail into these uh, things. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's something that is uh, also, as I said before, it's we are discussing it uh, more and more, how to include, of course, the user is in the center, and how to have the user co-designing not only the vehicles and the CCAM, the entire system, uh, tailor-made towards the, the, the needs of the user, but also catering for the needs of the entire system and not being uh, egocentric, as we were saying in, yesterday. Uh, in, in fact, when we talk about the entire system, uh, sometimes we forget because the entire system, in, the, in fact, is not just the, te the technical system at the end, it is our own world. That is the system in effect. Uh, and that is what we have to have in mind. Uh, yesterday, it was someone who was calling this kind of uh, uh, social uh, system in effect uh, that we have in, uh, that we have to have in mind. So I think, uh, yes, uh, definitely we, once again, these are, we all as humans, that is, uh, is, is uh, the thing we have to kind of optimize. Yes, absolutely. I think I think we are in the right track and I think this discussion is becoming more and more interesting. And we are not debating anymore. Eh? We are aligning more and more. That's what I see. Yeah. And I'm very happy about it. So I unfortunately have to close this uh, fa fantastic discussion and thank my uh, excellent panelists, Laura and Pedro and Wolfgang and Biagio. Uh, for these very inspiring presentations and this very short but very uh, uh, meaningful and inspiring uh, discussion at the end. Uh, I apologize that we couldn't answer all the questions. I know that we are, have recorded this webinar, so we are going, you're going to find it soon uh, on your mailbox with a link from my co dear colleague, Julia, who has been helping with the slides and with organizing this uh, webinar. Uh, thank you to the attendees, to the participants, for the questions, and to my panelists, who are also my friends, for the enthusiasm that we all share, for the constant thing in our life, which, as, as Laura said, and the solution to all problems, mobility, as I always say, and as I know you agree, traffic management. <laughs> thank you very much. Have a fantastic weekend. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.